Dr. Sagar Bhattad, MBBS, MD. He is the first DM in India in pediatric clinical immunology and rheumatology specialty. He is a renowned pediatric immunologist and rheumatologist in Bangalore. As a pediatric rheumatologist, when I say your child has juvenile idiopathic arthritis to any parent, they often look confused and perplexed. The purpose of this brief video is to tell you what parents ask me when I say your child has juvenile idiopathic arthritis. It was the other day a four-year-old young girl, a smart-looking girl, was brought to my outpatient department. Her knees were swollen and she was walking with a limp. And the parents obviously were worried and concerned. And I told them that your child seems to have juvenile idiopathic arthritis. They wondered and asked me, what is this doctor? I have never heard of this before. Then I asked them, have you heard of rheumatoid arthritis? At least some parents would say yes. This is an autoimmune condition wherein adults come to us typically with swelling of the joints, the knee joints, the wrist joints, the fingers, and they have the stiff joints and it's an autoimmune condition. And then I told them that juvenile idiopathic arthritis is nothing but rheumatoid arthritis that starts in childhood. Can young children develop it? What causes it? Children as young as two years of age can develop juvenile idiopathic arthritis. Most parents wouldn't have heard about it. And let me tell you, sometimes even doctors wonder when I say such a young child can develop rheumatoid arthritis. Now this is an autoimmune condition. What do you mean by autoimmune condition? I'm sure we have heard of the army, the army that protects us. Very similarly, in our body, there is an army, the army that's called the immune system, the white blood cells, which protect us from very various infections. Now, imagine a situation if your army turns back and starts attacking you. That's the condition, the autoimmune condition, wherein the white blood cells of the body are attacking our own tissues. So this is what we call autoimmunity and juvenile idiopathic arthritis is one of the most common autoimmune conditions that we see in young children. Is it because of the food that we ate at a restaurant? Is it an infection? These are some of the questions that parents often ask. They wonder whether it was food, whether it was infection. And they also wonder whether could they have prevented this because there is a sense of guilt in the parents. I tell them, I reassure them that this is not an infection. This is not because of the food and this would not have been prevented by them by any means because it occurs randomly and we still don't know why a few children develop this form of arthritis in young age. Is it because she fell in the play area? None of her family members have that problem. Why did she develop it then? No, this is not because of trauma. This is not because your child fell in the play area. And yes, none of the family members may have it and yet a child may develop this juvenile idiopathic arthritis. Now the word idiopathic means that the cause is not known. And that is why I would not be able to tell you why your child developed it. Yes, there are certain factors. There are certain genetic factors and environmental factors that we presume may be causing juvenile idiopathic arthritis in your child. However, why one particular child develops it is not known. What is the treatment for it? As I told you, it's an autoimmune condition. That means there is a bad part to the immune system in this case. And we need to suppress that bad part. There are certain white blood cells which are damaging the joints and we need to stop that damage. And that is why treatment would be immunosuppression or immunomodulation. What do I mean by that? The immunity has to be slightly suppressed so that this damage can be stopped. And we often use medicines like steroids and steroid sparing agents to treat these children. Steroids? How can we give steroids to such a young child? This will melt her bones. The pharmacist who gives us medicine warned us not to use such medication. You know, our grandparents say, we'll try Ayurveda, homeopathy, 
as allopathy medicines have side effects. Yeah, I understand your concerns. The moment I say steroids, it is not uncommon for the parents to get scared because they have heard so many things about steroids. The whole problem is steroids have been abused by quacks and when quacks use it, they cause a lot of problems. But here is a place where I'm openly telling you that I'm going to use steroids, but for a defined period. And this will definitely get your child better. Now the whole question whether I should use apathy or bipathy or allopathy often adds confusion to the parents' minds. Because when they go to another specialist, sometimes to another field, they are falsely reassured that the disease will be cured in six months. And that is where parents get lost. Let me tell you, I don't believe that there is a medicine which causes only effect and no side effect. There doesn't exist such a medicine. If there is a medicine that has an effect, it is likely to have a side effect. But then, if it is given in the right dose for the right time and we are going to monitor with blood tests, these side effects can be prevented. So do not worry and please take appropriate treatment. It is also important for you to understand that if you choose any other pathy apart from allopathy, please go ahead but do not mix medicines. Mixing will cause the maximum harm. We have seen children coming back with liver damage when they had taken medicines from other forms of pathies. And then there is a debate whether X medicine caused it or Y medicine caused it. Let us not take chance with our young children. This is not the time to experiment. Science has progressed and we should treat these children appropriately with the medicines available. I've heard about the second medication. What is the second medication? Yeah, so steroids is something that we use only for a short period to control the disease rapidly. However, on a longer run, we would use something called steroid sparing agent. As the name suggests, this is the medicine that will help us spare steroids or stop steroids. For that matter, there is a medicine by name methoprexate, and this is the most commonly used steroid sparing agent. This medicine definitely will get arthritis into control and get the child better and normal. But the problem is, this is a slow acting medicine. This medicine starts its work only after 6 to 8 weeks. So I can't see a child in trouble for the next 6 to 8 weeks. So that's why the short course of steroids and then a steroid sparing agent which will be given for some time when the child gets better. Methotrexate? I have googled about it. It is used to treat cancer. Does my child have cancer? I often hear this from parents. The moment they start googling, they are often confused. Yes, methotrexate is used to treat cancers, but then the dose used to treat cancer is much, much higher than what we use to treat arthritis. This is a very small dose with practically no side effects if monitored carefully. And let me tell you, let me reassure you, this medicine has been in place for treatment of arthritis for more than 50 years. So it's a time-tested medicine and you are definitely in safe hands if you are given this medicine in the right dose for the right time. How long do we give this medicine? This medicine invariably must be given, I'm talking about methotrexate, for at least two years. Or in other words, once the joints are normal, your child is normal, maybe for another year and then we stop this medicine. So these medicines can definitely be stopped. It is not that the child has to take these medicines for life. We give it for two years and majority of these children then have a normal life. Let me cut to chase, doctor. Can you cure this problem? This is one question that bothers most parents. Can this condition be cured? And in search of this answer, we go from door to door, from one doctor to another doctor. And in this crucial time, the joints get damaged and the children develop deformities. What I try to tell parents is that, have you heard of hypertension, high blood pressure, or high blood sugar? Yes, you have heard of it, right? Now, why do you treat high blood pressure? If you don't treat high blood pressure, your brain can get damaged, your kidneys or your eyes can get damaged. But then once you treat high blood pressure with medicines and change in your lifestyle, what would happen is your blood pressure gets controlled, all the medicines can be stopped. 
the same thing applies for treatment of arthritis. You treat your child with these medications and then a good healthy lifestyle. In the next few years, we can definitely stop all the medicines. So the, the answer to this question is, without treatment, these child develop deformities and their internal organs can also get affected. While with treatment, in the next few years, I would say two to three years, we should be able to stop treatment in majority. What diet, what food should I give her? What food would boost immunity in my child? What food would help cure arthritis? Let me tell you, this is not a food related disease or a food borne disease. So that is why avoiding a particular food like not eating rice, not eating non-vegetarian would not solve your problem. Yes, definitely having a, a well-balanced diet, a diet that is rich in green leafy vegetables, cutting down on junk food, cutting down on sugar, all these things will definitely benefit children with arthritis because we have seen children who are obese take much longer time to respond to a medicine. So that is why having appropriate weight, a good exercise program and then having healthy diet definitely will help your child. But then please don't try to make it black and white by saying I would not give chocolates at all. I would never feed any sugar to my child. Those are certain things which are impossible. So let's take a pragmatic call and cut down unnecessary junk food and give them a healthy diet. Parents watching this video must feel more comfortable treating the child with juvenile arthritis. Juvenile arthritis must be treated by a pediatric rheumatologist along with a pediatrician and a physiotherapist. So friends, rheumatoid arthritis does happen in children. We call it the juvenile idiopathic arthritis. And these children should also undergo periodic eye evaluation to make sure that if they have uveitis, the inflammation inside the eyes, they are treated in time. Let me reassure you that a few decades ago, when children developed this form of arthritis, there was hardly one or two medications to treat these children. So today we have more than a dozen such medications which can treat this condition. So let's be hopeful, let's believe in science and let's treat our children. Thank you.